Recording in progress. So we'll start with the Radha Madhav song. And uh, first of all, thank you all, devotees, to make it this evening. And uh, we are covering the 11th chapter, is what from the Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Kunja Vihari So let us begin with a prayer to Sri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra uh, to share the screen. We'll all start with the prayer. Om Agnana Timiran Dasya Gnana Ganeshalakaya Chakshuram Miritanyena Dasmai Shri Gurave Namaha 
ನಮಃ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕ್ಲೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿಪಿನಾಮಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯೇಷತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತನಾಭದ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ಬಿಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ So this entire class, this presentation is dedicated to His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada, who is the founder, Acharya, of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and which is inspired by His Holiness, Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj, who is the governing body, commission member, and the spiritual master at his time. So... Uh, How many did attend the chapter 10 summary last class? Can you all raise your hands? Okay. So, more subsequent. So, what was the title of the chapter 10? Vibhuti Yoga. Yeah. So, the opulence of the absolute is the title of chapter 10, where Krishna is talking about various aspects of this creation and his own creation and uh, he's talking about uh, that you can see me in various forms so um, he talks about uh, different qualities of men different qualities of women uh, di different qualities of the nature as such and uh, so on So he talks about how he is present in each and every substance, matter that we see. So he says, I am the taste in the water. I am the Himalayas of the, of the big trees. I am the banyan tree. So like that he goes on. right? So this way we'll understand the glories of Krishna. Arjuna understood the glories of Krishna. Until then, it was like mostly a friendly talk with Krishna, Krishna being a friend to Arjuna, uh, Arjuna also take, uh, took him lightly. But after he uh, revealed Krishna, after Krishna revealed himself in the 10th chapter, when he showed his uh, opulence, he, and he tells everything and he says, it's just a spark of my splendor. It's just you know, one third of my creation, what, what uh, I'm going to explain you. Right? So that way, Krishna is unlimited. Krishna's pastime is unlimited. Like how uh, Prabhu uh, explained how the Ananta, Sesha, he with his thousands of foods is glorifying the Lord and his pastimes without repeating each of his pastimes for millions of years. And he's, he does, I mean, he needs even more time, uh, maybe unlimited eternity, eternal time for him to glorify uh, Krishna's pastimes and still he'll not be over with it. Because every moment as we are here, every moment Krishna is creating history. Okay, So what we see uh, here, it, it actually has happened. Like Srimad Bhagavatam, the um, pastimes, we say it is pastimes, it is not uh, like how people say here in the mundane world, they say, okay, this might have happened or uh, they say it, you know it, it might have happened it's a, a myth a mythology so but mythology does not be uh, apply here to shriman bhagavatam or any of the scriptural uh, books literatures it ha it is history and mahabharata it, it is history which has happened ramayana is history that has happened So similarly, so it goes on and Krishna over here is all set to reveal his universal form. Okay. And, Krish and Krishna should be favorable to Arjuna. Arjuna as in we all. Right. So Krishna, Arjuna is seeing Krishna every time. But now 
Krishna is giving a special eye to Arjuna so that he could look Krishna in a, in a more gigantic way. Right? So uh, here we see in the photo how Arjuna is uh, seeing Krishna. So Krishna was in his two-handed form which he has expanded into the universal form and he doesn't know where the beginning is, where the uniform, uh, universal form ends. So he is all over. Krishna is all over in his universal form. And uh, Arjuna, for a moment, becomes uh, a little you know, jittery. And he says, no, no, I don't want to see this uh, universal form of yours. Come back to this beautiful two-hand form of Krishna. Because devotees are not much interested in looking uh, Krishna as a universal spiritual master or universal master. He, you know, the devotees in Vrindavan, just like the gopis, the gopas, the friends of Krishna, they just want Krishna to be his friend. That's all. Gopas. Gopis also want Krishna to be his beloved friend. Nothing more. You know? Just uh, like a cowherd boy playing in the uh, in the sands of Vrindavan. So that is how uh, the devotees of Krishna want to see Krishna as, but not in the universal form. So um, here, evametad yathatvam atmanam parameshwara drashtumichami te rupam aishwaram purushottama O greatest of all personalities, O supreme form, though I see you here before me in your actual position as you have described yourself, I wish to see how you have entered into this cosmic manifestation. I want to see that form of yours. So here, Arjuna is also not very keen or inquisitive to know about the universal form of Krishna because he is already convinced that the supreme uh, Krishna is the supreme Lord and everything, but in future he knew that people are going to question who is God, and this is how if anyone claims God like Kal Kali Yuga, everyone, all the yogis and babas have become God, right? So they claim themselves as to be God, and um, they mislead people. Now. Uh, how to define who is God? Here, Arjuna is teaching us. You know, if anyone claims that I am God, then we should ask, can that Baba or Yogi can show his universal form? Right? So only then can we believe that that person is a universe. Uh, I mean, he is God, which is not possible you know, unless and until it is mentioned in the uh, scriptures. Like how Kalki Avatar, which is going to uh, manifest, the Lord is going to manifest as Kalki incarnation at the end of Kali Yuga, which is still three, uh, 4 lakh, 30, uh, 28,000 odd years. But still, uh, it is mentioned in the scriptures that he is going to come in this way. His parents are this, and he's going to uh, you know, be born in this particular town, Everything is very clearly mentioned, defined in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which was, which is time immemorial. Uh, Bhagavatam is given to us by Vedavyasa. Right? So this way, we should question, like how Arjuna has questioned, uh, requested the Lord over here in this matter. He is requested so that in future, if anyone claims that uh, I am... Okay. That uh, he, he is God, then it is questionable. So, this way we have to be very careful when anyone is claiming themselves to be uh, God or something, which is very, very. Okay. So I'm going to 
some technical errors here okay so now krishna gives the divine vision to arjuna so here krishna being very kind upon arjuna he reveals himself so it is not that uh, krishna can i see you uh, can, can i see you please come in front of me so you cannot order krishna like that you cannot order god what he needs to do he is not like a order supplier in the hotel uh, waiter come here i want idli dosa vada please get it fast so it's not like that we cannot order krishna that he come and be manifest in front of us it is that we have to beg the lord so that we could see him in the way that he wants us to see we sing the song right uh, jagannath swami nayana patagami nayana patagami bhavatme so jagannath swami the lord of the universe krishna nayana patagami please give me the eye anointed with love so that i will be able to see you in the most beautiful way that you want me to see it's not that and you, and again coming back how a devotee wants to see krishna the devotee first of all doesn't want god to see him he is very interested in serving god and he serves god in such a way that god is very interested in knowing who this person is and krishna will come in front of uh, the devotee and say hey uh, i'm really pleased with your service okay tell me what you want right so that is that is how uh, we have to see uh, the devotional activity how we have to be uh, what is our focus our focus is always on how well i can perform my devotional service in such a way that god is willing to see us not that i am very busy in searching for god and in that process i forget what what spirituality is right so everyone is want to, wanting to see okay i want to see god i want to see god everyone is very uh, keen on what is uh, how how to um, you know please god by being in front of god right so in the temples also we we see that to gain the attention of god they do many things right so they clap their hands they they perform uh, they, they shout shout out the lord's name which is all good but again that is also another form of uh, bhakti but yes more importantly we'll have to follow the instructions of god we'll have to follow the instructions of bhagavad gita and that way krishna is pleased on us it is as good as we uh, seeing god or god seeing us right so uh, here Arjuna saw in that universal form unlimited mouths, unlimited eyes, unlimited wonderful visions. The form was decorated with many celestial ornaments and bore many divine appraised weapons. He wore celestial garlands and garments and many divine scents were smeared over his body. All was wondrous, brilliant, unlimited, all expanding. So here... Again, it's a divine vision that Arjuna got. There, there were a million crores of people on the battlefield. It was such a big uh, battle, right? So many, many thousands of men were there. Not that everyone saw the universal form. It was a very few of them. And one amongst was Arjuna. Okay. So here... Um, Arjuna is seeing the most majestic form of the Lord and this is also another mercy of Krishna because why two qualities Arjuna had that uh, Prabhu told in the previous class. What is the two qualities? Krishna, uh, Arjuna was a friend and was a devotee. 
bhaktosi me sakacheti rahasya deta duttamam. So I'm going to reveal this transcendental knowledge to you because you are my dear friend and you are my devotee. Arjuna Vacha Pashyami Deva Devam Stavadeva Dehe Sarvam Statha Bhuta Vishesha Sanghan Brahmanam Isham Kamala Sarastam Rishim Chasarvan Uragam Stadivyan. Can anyone tra translation please? Yes, somebody in your body, all the demigods and related to the living entity. I see Brahma sitting on the lotus flower as well as Lord Shiva and all the sages and, and divine serpents. Yeah. Here, Arjuna saw the universal form and the devatas also were able to see the universal form. That is what is mentioned here. I see Brahma, uh, of course, uh, the devatas also were able to see Arjuna and Arjuna also could see all the devatas in that universal form of Krishna. Okay, So um, he, he could see Lord Shiva present in the universal form, all the sages, the divine serpents, Vasuki, Ananta being in the universal form. So he explains everything, every bit of what he saw in that universal form. This Bhagavad Gita, chapter 11, verse 15, you will find it. We will share this with you. And chapter 11, verse number 23, O mighty arm one, all the planets with their demigods are dis disturbed at seeing your great form with its many faces, eyes, arms, thighs, legs, and bellies, and you are and you are many terrible teeth, and as they are disturbed, so am I. So it was very nice seeing the uh, the universal form of the Lord, but after seeing. Uh, he also becomes perturbed. He becomes a little disturbed, saying, uh, okay, I am also disturbed, and I am also seeing the other devatas also being disturbed by seeing your ferocious form. And in that ferocious form, he could also see that all the enemies are entering the, the, the mouth of uh, one, one of the mouths of the universal forms. You know? ferocious forms. He could see all the uh, people uh, assembled in the battle being crushed to death. And that is Arjuna is also disturbed yeah, by seeing all this. And Arjuna is seeing what is going to happen in future also. That is what is mentioned here. So uh, Arjuna is seeing uh, the actual form and Arjuna is also seeing that uh, all the Kauravas, they are being entered into uh, this universal form already dead. So it is already destined that the Pandavas get their rightful position and all the Kauravas be destroyed. It was just that Arjuna had to play a part of this as an instrument in the hands of Lord. And that is what even Krishna reveals in the end. You know? So I have told everything about what needs to be done, uh, what it is, what is actually it is. Okay. Now it is up to you. Now you can make the choice of uh, being the victor of uh, you know, uh, destroying all the Kauravas okay, and taking that kingly position. And uh, if not, you, you it is your choice. So that freedom of choice was given by Krishna to Arjuna. Same way it was also the living entities, Krishna gives us the choice. Krishna gives us the choice saying that uh, I, uh, you know, Bhagavad Gita is introduced in the same form, in, in that same mood, right? So just like how um, Krishna is revealing himself, everything, it is not only to Arjuna that he is doing all this. 
it is for us. You know, when we read Bhagavad Gita, we should understand that Krishna is talking to me. Krishna is talking to me. And that is how we will understand that uh, Krishna is instructing me. And this is one level of understanding. But even if not, even if I have not read the Bhagavad Gita at all, per se, I will know what is right and what is wrong because the, the Lord is in the heart. I instantly, even a child will know, okay, this is wrong. I should not be uh, stealing another, uh, uh, you know, my friend's pen or pencil. That the instantaneous uh, thing is already there, uh, that this is correct and this is wrong. This is truth and this is false. We know it already. It is only that um, we need an external factor, an external guru also. Just like how Krishna is the Jagat Guru and he is the Chitta Guru also. Okay, He is, he is the spiritual master of everyone uh, internal, internally. And he is so magnanimous, he is so kind upon us, he is so compassionate that he also gives us the external guru uh, who is uh, who, who comes here to this material world and namma uh, for our uh, upliftment so we we see uh, uh, you know personalities like uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, you know jay swami guru maharaj and all the predecessor acharyas so we come in a disciplic succession okay just like the mantle is given from one person to another this lamp of knowledge is being distributed from from krishna to uh, you know to all the acharyas now and in that disciplic succession we also there are four sampradayas like that shri sampradaya shri sampradaya rudra sampradaya uh, then uh, kumara sampradaya and one more <clears throat> Shri Kumara, uh, uh, yeah, Madhvasam, yeah. So the, the four uh, authentic uh, universities we can call, and anyone who claims that um, I am I belong to this um, uh, this sampradaya, uh, then he should identify himself in one of these four. Okay, just like how we get this authentic. Uh, if I want to become um, uh, an engineer. I'll have to be, you know, uh, have to clear all the exams under the proper university, right? Which is accredited by the government, so uh, or a body. Similarly, here also it's the same. All the sons of Dhritarashtra, along with their allied kings and Bhishma, Drona, Karna, and our chief soldiers also are rushing into the fearful mouths. And some, I see trap with the heads smashed between your teeth. So Krishna is as soft as the flower, as a rose. A rose, we all have felt it. He is as soft as the rose and he is as hard as thunderbolt. Prabhupada says and he, 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 he always... Uh, Likes to take that uh, example of how Krishna is the stronger, uh, strongest, stronger than the strongest, and he is the most uh, you know, soft than the softest. So over here, when we are seeing Krishna, Krishna is like uh, you know, even more heavier than a thunderbolt. He's he's very uh, in his ferocious form, just like how even Narasimha showed his ferocious form. And all those are very extreme, right? But yes, we see all kinds of bhava, all kinds of expressions just to satisfy his devotees. You know, he wants to have that uh, loving exchange with his devotees. Uh, just like how uh, Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, they're all actual devotees of the Lord who in a circumstance became his, their opponents and even Krishna wants to fight with a with a valid opponent, not like any uh, you know. If a Pailwan is uh, uh, you know fighting in the ring, then an equivalent uh, 
a strong person is actually got them, not a weak person, right? Similarly, I mean, I just gave a crude example like that, but it is the same with uh, Krishna. If Krishna is going to be the op opponent, uh, then better be that even the, the opposite person who is the demon, he also be as or as as much as powerful as he, he is required to be uh, destroyed by the Lord. So like how Kamsa, Kamsa also was very, very strong. Ravana, Ravana also was very, very strong, right? No one in the whole of the worlds, all the three worlds could not destroy him except for Vishnu, right? So that way, the opponent also becomes as uh, as uh, tough. Here we see uh, you know, Karana, Dhritarashtra, who is like the pillar of the entire Kaurava family. They are all very, very uh, fit personalities. Bhishma, Drona, Karna, all of these great personalities uh, were all fit to be the opponents of the Lord and they, you know, they, they found their end that way. So even in uh, Brahma Samhita, it is told about how um, how we have to see God in in a way that is anointed with love. Our our eye should be anointed with love. Preman jana churita bhakti vilochanena santa sadaiva ridayeshu vilokayanti yam shama sundaram achintya gunaswarukam govindam adi purusham tamaham bajami. There, Lord Brahma is uh, praying to Krishna, st stating that Premanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochanena. Please anoint my uh, eye with loving devotional service, uh, loving devotion unto you, so that Santa Sadaiva Radhayeshu Vilokayanti all in that beautiful two handed uh, Shamasundara form. I would always want that form to be manifested in front of my eye. So that I will always be in your devotional service like that. So here, no one wants to see Krishna in this ferocious form where he is destroying all the opponents, everyone uh, being crushed under uh, the teeth of Krishna. No one wants to see that. At least the devotees would want not want to. Um, yeah. So that, but what, how the devotees want to, that is also, that is mentioned like by Lord Brahma himself. Right. Here the meaning is the translation, O Lord of Lords, O fears of form, please tell me who you are. I offer my obeisances unto you. Please be gracious to me. You are the primal Lord. I want to know about you, for I do not know what is your what your mission is. Okay. So Arjuna has become really tensed, disturbed. And uh, he, he doesn't know why, you know, Krishna is showing this form of the universal form to him. And he wants to know what, what's happening. Uh, please uh, get me out of here. That kind of a uh, you know, uh, request by Arjuna. And uh, uh, which one? Yeah. So here, yeah. So the fears of, you want me to repeat the translation? So here... The meaning, the understanding is that Krishna, you are the primal Lord. What is your mission? Why you are showing me this universal form? Uh, why are you making me disturbed by showing this fearful form of you? Okay, why? So that, that's a basic question. Why? Okay. So Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kalosmi Loka Kshayakrit Pravritto Lokan samahartum iha pravritta rite pitvam na bhavishyanti sarve ye vastitha pratyanikeshu yodaha. So, I don't know why the translation is not here. Okay. So, here Krishna says that of time I am the destroyer of the whole world. This is even um, the greatest, one of the latest uh, scientists, Oppenheimer. There was a movie based on his uh, theory. So uh, Oppenheimer also quotes this. Who, this the scientist or this uh, whoever it is, uh, he's the greatest of 
the inventors, the scientists. Um, so he say, uh, he quotes this particular shloka of Bhagavad Gita and says, uh, Krishna has told about time, uh, he is the destroyer of the greatest. So, so what he meant to say, because he is the one who tests the nuclear bomb. Okay. And uh, the destroyer. So how destructions take place. So that person, that scientist, he was quoting this uh, Bhagavad Gita shloka and says that even the destruction comes from the Lord. Okay. So that kind of a scientist is very rare nowadays. Okay. But uh, yes, that is what he understood. The reason why the destruction takes place. When creation takes place, then it is very natural that even destruction also takes place under the direction of the Lord. How oh, when there is something beautiful, there is something ugly. That is the dual, duality, a dual nature of this world. If uh, if someone is uh, content and satisfied, there is someone who is always disturbed and uh, full of anxiety. Right. So this is the dual duality of this material world. Okay. Destruction also takes place uh, under the instruction of the Lord Himself. Tasmatva Mutishta Yeshola Baswa Jitva Shatrun Bhumshwa Rajam Samridham Mayai Vaite Nihataha Purameva Nimitamatram Bhavasavya Sachin. So here Krishna is also giving a hint. Krishna again in the 18th chapter he repeats that you become uh, an instrument, but here he directly says, Therefore get up, prepare to fight and win glory, Arjuna. Conquer your enemies and enjoy a flourishing kingdom. They are already put to death by my arrangement. And you, O Savya Sachi, can be but an instrument in this fight. So, Savya Sachi uh, means he was so powerful, just like how you are seeing this fan here rotating. Can you, can you count the number of blades in this fan? Right now? No. Right? When it starts, you will be able to see that there are three blades. The movement of uh, Arjuna's hands on the quiver, uh, on the bow and arrow, or taking, uh, taking the uh, bow from the quiver and shooting the arrows, it was so fast that no one could understand how many arrows are there in his quiver and how many uh, arrows he's shooting uh, from his both his hands. So that, that is how, and he was so fast and so accurate at shooting the uh, arrows. So uh, that is how he gets this name, Savya Sachi. Yeah. And uh, this Savya Sachi, who is so dexter, very perfect in whatever he is doing, now he is in anxiety and he says, why, why you have come in this universal form? Why are you showing so much of destruction, uh, destructive form of yours to me? Please reveal yourself. I am getting disturbed. He asks, uh, he tells everything. And here Krishna is replying to his disturbed nature. Okay. Here Krishna says, Tasmat Tvam Uthishta Yesho Labasva. So you get up and fight. Okay. You become an instrument. You take the fame. Again, Krishna is uh, one of the Krishna's qualities as Bhagavan, okay, as uh, Bhagavan is uh, being renunciant. Being renunciant means uh, there are six qualities of Bhagavan. Bhagavan means the one with Aishwarya, Samagra, Sabiriya, Sayeshaha, Shriyaha, Jnana, Vairagya. So, yeah, so this uh, six qualities make one Bhagavan. What is that six qualities? One is um, being power. He is all powerful. He is all famous. He is uh, all knowledgeable. He is all rich. Okay, and um, he is Yesha Shriyaha. Then he is all renunciant. He is all renunciant. So he creates millions of universes, and he leaves it. 
for them to be for our uh, for our own pleasures right so they he creates this entire world and he leaves it to us so that we can enjoy enjoy in the sense so this is a jail kind of a thing atmosphere right that is how uh, we see it as because dukkhalayam ashashvatam this one is this this place of misery and it is temporary but even though if it is even though it is temporary it is place of misery but still all the arrangements are there right so at the right time uh, uh, the sun is uh, rising at the right time we get uh, all the four seasons right everything is happening as per the clock work right with all that perfection why does it happen under the instruction of the lord but everything is happening but he is there and he is not there as well right his eternal home is goloka vrindavana his original form is always there but whenever he performs his pastime just like 5000 years ago krishna came here to this material world right in dwapara yuga now uh, we we hear about it 5000 years ago krishna gave this bhagavad gita to us the instructions of the bhagavad gita how 5000 why this 5000 because krishna is now here any time right itho narsimha parato narsimha yatho yatho yami tatho narsimha the lord is everywhere he is inside of us he is outside of us he is everywhere of course he is everywhere but at the same time he is not there as well okay so he when he why he is not there and where is he he is in goloka vrindavana all the time eternally he is present there even though the lord is there in vrindavana goloka eternally present he is at the same time performing his pastimes in this bhumandala and like this there are millions of other bhumandalas in other universes just like how uh, one of the presentations we had where vishnu uh, when he breathes in he actually inhales millions of universes when he breathes out he creates millions of universes out of his pores just like how we all have our pores out of each pores there are millions of universes created so when that creation and destruction all those hap happen you know he is created uh, creating it to perfection with no uh, no, no matter uh, no matter everything being perfect nothing is uh, wrong in krishna's creation so that way we see that a uh, lot of mahavishnu he is lying on the serpent bed he is uh, creating millions of universes he is destroying all that happens but he is again renunciant right so all the six qualities is actually bhagwan and one of the qualities that he is a renunciant he also renounce fame here he doesn't want to be the actual hero he wants arjuna to be the actual hero and he is ready to give that fame to arjuna but all the work has happened but he says according to my plan everything every uh, you know according to my arrangement everyone is put to that okay all the kauravas are dead now but you take the credit arjuna this beautiful way of how a loving exchange happens between us and the lord right so just that way he is showing it to arjuna and here also we we claim that i i I've, i've done this i've uh, you know cracked this exam uh, i've uh, earned this promotion i've um, you know uh, i've made this deal uh, happen and uh, i'm supposed to get x amount of money because of my endeavor so all that endeavor is there all that you know the intelligence going beyond uh, behind all this actions is also sanctioned by the lord but if we forget that he is the one who is giving us all this and we enjoy it on our own now that is where the problem is okay but if we acknowledge and be grateful and show that gratitude to to the lord then everything becomes spiritualized even our success in this material world whatever success you know it could be as simple as uh, a small thing but if we 
show that gratitude to the Lord that I'm successful, my dear Lord. It is only because of your, your mercy, then it is all good. So I'm sharing the screen. Then after seeing this universal form, which I have never seen before, okay, I'm continuing here. Oh, yeah. Arjuna says, so after seeing this universal form, which I have never seen before, I'm gladdened. But at the same time, my mind is disturbed with fear. Therefore, please bestow your grace upon me and reveal again your form as the personality of God, it, O Lord of Lords. Oh, a board of the universe. So, uh, so he is requesting the Lord that he come back to his normal two-handed beautiful form that he wants to see because he is already disturbed because uh, he's seeing so many things and uh, that is not able. He is not able to digest it. And but the other understanding is that everything rests upon Krishna. Okay, just like how um, air is resting in space, even though we are not able to see it, but we are all breathing, yeah, and it is all happening because of the mercy of the Lord. Just like that, the entire universe is spread across his energy. So, four handed form of Krishna and two handed form of Krishna. So, when Arjuna thus saw Krishna in his Original form, he said, O Janathana, seeing this human-like form, so very beautiful, I am now composed in mind and I am restored to my original nature. Okay, So now Arjuna is like, okay, thank you Krishna for getting, uh, getting back to this uh, uh, you know, two-handed beautiful form of yours. I am really very uh, peaceful now. And he, he shows his gratitude there. Okay. And uh, here, this again is a very uh, important shlokas. Bhaktyatvananya shakya aham evam vidho jana nyatam drashtami cha tatvena bravishtam cha parantapa. My dear Arjuna, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So this normal human uh, form of Krishna, everyone able, uh, was able to see, but not everyone were able to identify Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God. Now, he was just like another boy, a covered boy, uh, he would always uh, go along with the uh, cows to the pasturing grounds, take care of the cows, uh, play like uh, with other Gopa boys. Not that everyone understood Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Only the people or only the devotees who, who were able to express their uh, gratitude, their love towards the Supreme Lord were able to understand that he is the supreme personality of God. And at the same time, he is in his two-handed form in before us. Okay. So that is one form, one way of seeing. So how is that actual screen put in front of us? Just like how Yoga Maya Samavata. So this Yoga Maya covers the because see, say for example, Yashoda Maya. Yashoda, Mother Yashoda wants to see Krishna in his baby-like form only, right? As his, uh, as her own child. And if she starts uh, understanding Krishna, the supreme personality of God, the master of the master, the master of the universes, everything, then that loving exchange between the, the mother and the son is gone, right? So there, the yoga, yoga maya covers uh, Yashoda. Saying that, okay, fine. I, you, you are very dear to Krishna. You want to be the mother of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Fine. 
now you see Krishna in his beautiful form as a boy, uh, your own son. So there, uh, the Yoga Maya covers uh, the vision of uh, or the understanding of uh, Yashoda. And Yashoda takes care of Krishna like uh, her own baby. Okay, Just so that that loving exchange doesn't hinder. So the devotees want this aspect of seeing Krishna, not the other aspect of uh, seeing Krishna uh, in the supreme form, uh, all of that. Because um, everyone wants to be connected with Krishna, either of the forms where there are, there are different mellows in connecting to the Lord. One dasya uh, in the form of servitude to Krishna. One as uh, paternal affection, just like how uh, uh, Nanda Maharaj showed paternal affection towards Krishna. Uh, then uh, we also have uh, uh, Hanuman, who showed that uh, servant attitude to Lord Rama, right? So the same way we also see um, there is uh, Gopi Bhava, where you see all the gopis looking at Krishna as her beloved. So that way we see different ways of connecting with the Lord. Shantarasa is also there. This all comes in the nectar of devotional service. One of the books, <clears throat> the nectar of devotional service, it is mentioned about uh, how Shantarasa, even the grasses in Vrindavan, the, the beautiful flowers in Vrindavan, they are also you know, serving the Lord in, in one form or the other. Okay, where in Shantarasa, they, they don't have that actual, just like how even a table, uh, a, a computer or anything in the spiritual world, <clears throat> um, they are all serving the Lord in a beautiful way, in their own capacity. And they are satisfied, they are content with whatever way, uh, say for example, a glass, a glass uh, or a plate, so in spiritual world also, there is plate, there are glasses, there are you know, very nice um, tables and chairs, everything. They are also personalities. Okay, Just like how we see even the ornaments that the Lord wears, they're all personalities. The flute that Krishna plays, he is Mahananda. The name of the flute is Mahananda. Uh, just like one of the names that I uh, recovered uh, or understood. So each and every ornament, each and every uh, thing associated with the Lord, it is all spiritual personalities. They all serve the Lord in Shantarasa. So there, there are many forms like that, where you, you in whatever way that you want to connect with the Lord, the Lord is ready in that way. Mama Vartman Vartunte Manushya Parasarvashana. So he says, Ye um, Thama, the way you want me to uh, approach you, the, that way I am ready to be uh, in front of you. <clears throat> this is again uh, one of the very important shlokas again, okay, where uh, you know, Mat Karmakrin, Mat Paramo, Mat Bhakta, Sangha Varjitaha. Nir, nirvairaha sarvabhuteshu yasa maam eti pandava. My dear Arjuna, Krishna says, he who engages in my pure devotional service, free from contaminations of brutal activities and mental speculation, he who works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of his life, and who is friendly to every living being, he certainly comes to me. So by uh, you know, creating hatred towards others, can they become Krishna conscious or will Lord be pleased with the person? No. Here Krishna has very clearly given instructions. Who is friendly to every living being. So it could be <clears throat> bringing disturbances or annoyance to other living entities. One cannot become uh, dear to the Lord. Whoever that person is. Uh, if, if in case you find yourself in a situation where the person is not really gelling well with you or he is 
he or she is not actually according to uh, he they are not doing something right then best is if they are very dearly you instruct them not to do so if that is not the case then you be aloof from them. okay either of these things uh, because uh, creating envy it just uh, it creates a bag of um, all the karma in our own in our own self that will it'll just become like an anchor uh, which will not help us move forward okay so this way um, krishna says about contamination you know performing devotional service free of any contamination of creative activities now i'll come i'll go uh, do some active say for example um, i have some motive in mind and then i go there uh, do that activity so that i'll get something out of it if that is the kind of motive then um, you'll have to grow again i mean mature in your understanding that is what it means uh, means over here so you you perform any kind of do say someone uh, you know xyz person he comes and donates some 1 lakh rupees to the temple or to the center anything like that uh, and he starts talking about it to everyone oh i did this i you know gave this money to the center all of that then he is expecting something out of it he is expecting uh, fame out of it right so if there there is some contamination like that then uh, i just gave a crude example okay uh, don't literally mean it but yes uh, that is the fact that uh, the person is expecting something out of his actions his or her actions then um, that is not fully um, manifested love towards god it's just that as a matter of duty or as a matter of his status that that person is doing something right even it could be like uh, some person is coming to the temple just to have uh, krishna prasadam and uh, not actually attend the deities not to attend the deity so that is also one way one level of understanding and this also is one level of understanding where uh, he, the person is coming and donating his hard earned money to uh, the center to the temple of the lord then he is acknowledging the supreme uh, you know supreme uh, power of the lord so that is one good aspect so there krishna takes only the bhava so what is that bhava that that person has come all the way just to give his hard earned uh, you know returns you know the fruits of his actions then i will reward him in such a way even if uh, whoever just comes enters the temple not to attend the deities but just to have prasadam that is a lower level of understanding but still it is glorious because it is uh, much better than going somewhere else and eating some uh, some food which is not offered to the lord okay so all that uh, nuances is there where small detailings are there how we can perform the devotional service free from contamination so that this one shloka itself uh, will require a whole days time where we can understand more about the details but yes overall this is the gist that um, without mental speculation krishna says M mental speculation means okay <clears throat> Uh, this is what i did uh, now i came here i performed all this uh, you know aarti and ceremony i i sponsored for this aarti ceremony to the lord now i think i i i deserve that i get a promotion in my job okay so that is a kind of again a mental speculation i mean i just gave a, another another example like this but there are many uh, such examples uh, you know instances in life that we understand that okay this is a mental speculation we will have to be wary of it okay so it goes on like that he work who he who works for me who makes me the supreme goal of his life so not everyone's goal of life ideally it should be that everyone's goal of life is narayana the you know parodha so everyone's goal is that we all be the servants of the supreme personality of god it but how many of them work towards it on a daily basis on a weekly basis monthly basis to reach that ultimate 
destiny or ultimate goal of our life now that is something that we'll have to ponder upon okay so very very important shloka uh, where he is actually giving the gist of the entire uh, entire chapter okay so he suddenly comes to me krishna says of course um, you all know the far, uh, the story of how uh, krishna showed the universal form uh, or the universe itself in his mouth right how many of you know this uh, this this past time only one two three okay so everyone knows how krishna ate mud and uh, balram uh, brother goes and complains um, uh, to mother yashoda yeah, mother yashoda doesn't believe it and uh, says krishna to open his mouth so that she can actually see that uh, whatever Bala, balaram is complaining uh, if that is true okay and krishna opens his mouth and krishna shows the entire universe including herself inside the mouth of the universe uh, in inside the mouth of krishna then uh, krishna uh, yashoda faints then nand maharaj comes and consoles uh, yashoda maya and uh, says you know this is all fact okay um, we are all inside the lord yet outside as well you you can see that one of the small pictures here here <clears throat> here mother yashoda sees herself and krishna inside the mouth of krishna okay now that is what she gets bewildered and she faints uh, faints as in of course because uh, that that bhava of uh, Understand, oh my, what's happening? Uh, there's something abnormal in my child. Uh, I'll have to take uh, take him to the hospital or something. In that kind of bhava she was and she fainted. Okay, uh, Thinking that something evil has happened to my uh, child. Uh, someone has uh, done, done some black magic on my child. And she becomes so fearful. Okay, not understanding that Krishna is the supreme personality of God and everything rests on him, everything is in him. Uh, due to that anxiety of uh, that you know, maternal affection or um, vatsalya rasa, they say, motherly affection towards Krishna, she faints. So why she faints also, there are there, there is a lot of description. And one of the reasons is this, that she loves uh, her son so much that she doesn't want Krishna to be in pain anymore. So that's why. Uh, so, so she sees and then uh, uh, Nand Maharaj reminds uh, Krishna, okay, this is how it is. Uh, don't worry. Um, everything is everything is normal. Krishna is uh, you know, special to us. And Arjuna at the end, he says, Oh, master of the senses, the world becomes joyful upon hearing your name and the, everyone becomes attached to you. Okay. Okay. So he, he is happy that he, Krishna came back to the two-handed form. And he is uh, revealing uh, himself in a in a way which is much more pleasing to him, and that is uh, that is how Arjuna actually is, uh, you know, uh, replying to the uh, to to the Lord. That I'm very satisfied with. Him. Arjuna requests. Uh, so we'll just have a recap over here. Uh, Arjuna wishes, wishes to see all the pervas all pervasive form of the Lord, and that is how this eleventh chapter is created, the universal form. Arjuna requests Krishna to show him the all-pervading all universal form. Krishna bestows special vision. Okay, So not everyone in the battlefield was able to see the universal form, but a very few of them, including the devotees. Sanjaya's description has questions. Arjuna beholds Krishna's universal form. First, he is uh, all existing, measurable with great radiance. He saw the frightening Kala Rupa of Krishna. Kalosmi Lokak Shayakritra Vritto. Here we understood that of all the destroyers <clears throat> of time, he is the destroyer. So Krishna, as time, destroys everything. Yeah. Arjuna questioned Krishna, who, what is your mission? Why 
have you come and shown me this uh, this ghastly form? So Krishna's answer, time I am, um, uh, you know, uh, destroyer of everything, and uh, you become my instrument. Bhava Sabya Sarchan, you, you become my instrument, Krishna says, and Krishna's prayers, he begs he beg for uh, forgiveness. There's a very nice shloka for that as well, uh, one of the verses for that as well. And he glorified Krishna. Krishna showed his two handed form. Uh, he, first of all, shows the four handed form as Narayana, and he also showed the two handed form of his original self. And, and uh, that is how the 11th chapter ends. Any questions here? Any feedback? Anything that you had to go back to any of the slides? If you have any questions, you can do that. Any feedback? If this uh, this was too fast or too short, anything like that? Is this correct? Yeah, it becomes a little longer. Okay then. Uh, so we will stop here. Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki.